Hello there, uh, welcome back. Uh, this is Dr. Vahir Yadus and this is the second part of a series of uh, videos on reliability analysis. In the first part I discuss external reliability and in this part I'm going to discuss internal reliability analysis. Uh, so a very basic definition of internal reliability which I believe is useful is that is an indication of how well items or tasks in an instrument work together to measure the same thing. Some, some authors and scholars refer to it as homogeneity whereas others uh, do not agree with it in using the terminology homogeneity and they, they think that uh, Chromebooks Alpha is not about homogeneity and the reason is that homogeneity is usually associated with the concept of unidimensionality whereas Chromebooks Alpha cannot be taken as as a measure of unidimensionality as I will uh, discuss further later so that's why I have put a qu uh, question mark in front of homogeneity uh, like I said I personally do not use it so uh, uh, I don't know if you would you prefer to use the term homogeneity or not so, uh, in other words, if scores and performances on similar items are related, then the items uh, can be said uh, to have internal consistency. Uh, that's they are internally consistent. Um, one more point about internal consistency and reliability um, altogether is that an estimate of reliability will be unique to the sample of participants uh, at that particular occasion and not it's not something uh, perpetual so if your co uh, your reliability analysis returns a good uh, for example uh, coefficient alpha it doesn't mean that this coefficient alpha is applicable to all other contexts uh, for which you have not uh, done any reliability analysis therefore a test that has a high coefficient alpha in in context a if it's using context B, you also have to estimate its reliability for context B. Or basically, I should say, to estimate the reliability of the data to, uh, gotten from context B. Um, so, a Chromebox Alpha is one of the most commonly used uh, methods of estimating internal consistency, which was developed by Chromebox in 1951 in his paper called uh, Coefficient Alpha and and the internal structure of tests which was published in Psychometrica. Uh, it, it has been a, a very influential paper because uh, almost in every paper where we read anything about measurement especially if people uh, use classical test theory you'll see that they have reported uh, Cronbach's alpha internal reliability, reliability statistic. Now uh, one more point about Cronbach's alpha is that uh, it therefore indicates how closely the, your set of items are related to to the test. Uh, I will represent this further by uh, looking into the correlations and uh, we'll um, unpack this concept f uh, more for you. The range of Cronbach's alpha is usually taken to be between 0 and 1. So 0 is no consistency and 1 is perfect consistency of the test items or the tasks. But here's the thing, sometimes you encounter a scenario where the Cronbach's alpha value is smaller than 0 and that's a negative value. If you do, don't be surprised that only that only means a very bad piece of news for your measurement which sometimes indicates that there are some items or there is at least one item in your test which has a negative correlation with the rest of the test items and then you have to un to find it out and perhaps either recode it or I uh, just uh, remove it from the analysis. One more thing is that Cronbach's alpha is a representation of the amount of meaningful variance in test scores that can be attributed to test takers' true score variance and not the error of measurement. And what does that mean? This is actually an idea based on classical test theory. Uh, so I'm going to write this word here, this terminology for you, classical test theory. And what this theory means is, uh, predicts is that every person has a true score, a true ability. For example, true ability in reading and writing, etc. So uh, the observed score 
is a representation of this true score with some error. The lower the error of measurement, the closer the true score to the the observed score uh, to the to the true score. Therefore, in some scenarios where you er your error of measurement is zero, the true score and the observed score are actually the same. Now, I want to provide an example of how to apply uh, this concept to the context of to a, to a context where you use Cronbach's alpha value. For example, if the Cronbach's alpha value is 0 0.90, then 90% of the variance in the observed test scores can be accounted for uh, by or can be attributed to, the, and this is how you actually say it, uh, the variance in the test taker's true scores. In other words, uh, you have 10% of variance accounted for by the error of measurement or measurement error. This is construct irrelevant variance, whereas the other uh, part, that's uh, where the um, the other part which is not accounted for by the error is construct relevant variance. That's the terminologies that we use in educational measurement and uh, and language testing or language assessment. So if if your Cronbach alpha is ninety percent is is ninety, if you have ninety percent of confidence that your observed scores represent true scores. But if, for example, if it is zero point three, based on the classical test theory, you only have thirty percent of confidence that your observed scores represent the true scores, and you have seventy percent of in confidence or lack of confidence that uh, your scores do not really represent the true score and so that's that might not be a very high index something like 0 0.3 is not very a very high index of correlation or Cronbach's alpha so uh, Cronbach's alpha uh, is a concept that rests upon a few other concepts one is the number of items the other one is the average variance according to this formula because it has conceptualized Cromax Alpha as a function of a few uh, concepts like uh, variance, that's V bar, the average, uh, uh, sorry, that's, yeah, the, the average variance, and then C bar, which is the average covariance between item pairs. Uh, but you can also represent it in a separate, in a different way, as, as it's been represented here, which is chi, uh, k or chi. Or k is actually the number of items, not chi. Actually, it's k. K over k minus one times one minus uh, the s uh, summation or the, the sum up of uh, um, of standard deviations over uh, standard deviations squared. That's the variance actually over. Uh, the same thing but for the test but this is for items this is for tests and this is another representation of the same formula so uh, from these formulas what follows is that Cronbach's alpha is esti uh, or is is kind of sensitive to correlation and sample size especially correlation and sample size meaning that uh, by sample size I I'm let me just be more specific by sample size I'm here I'm referring to uh, the number of test items. So if the number of test items is, is low and the correlation is small then chances are that you'll get a lower Cronbach's alpha value than if they were larger. Now uh, I have said that correlation plays an important role in, uh, in evaluating Cronbach's alpha values. So let's take a look at the correlation of uh, let me just show you the items first. I have four items, and these uh, actually are uh, actual items. They're not anything f uh, fictitious. Uh, so they're coming from uh, a part of my uh, paper, uh, which was published in 2012, and a book published in 2013. I will provide references uh, at the bottom of this video for you. So th this is actually an IELTS listening test uh, which has four sections and I've added up the uh, items in section one then section two and three and four to create four uh, composite scores. Now I want to figure out if the correlation between these composite scores is high or or what. So I, uh, first correlations actually. I go to bivariate correlations and I move section one all the way to section four to this side to populate variables. I don't want to choose anything else, just click OK and I'll get the correlation 
uh, between those items and as you see the correlation between section 1 and 2 for example is 0.603 whereas it drops uh, with section 4 to 0 0.574 Right now, you can see fluctuations and variance between these um, um, correlation uh, coefficients. Now, the question is whether there is a way to summarize all of these correlations, as you see, for example, this, this, this. Is there any any way to summarize these correlation statistics into one index? Uh, as I have already been talking about and men mentioning, yes, there is, and that's called internal consistency Cronbach's alpha value uh, this is how you estimate it you go to scales you go to reliability analysis and then you populate the items table on the right hand side and you go to statistics I I prefer to choose both correlations and covariances why do I do this let me quickly go back to the slides see here uh, Cronbach's alpha is a function of covariance between pair items so th this is how we estimate it here but you can also get standardized a kind of standardized version of Cronbach's alpha but using correlations so I'm gonna get both and there's usually a very small difference between the two but it's a good idea to get a feel for both of these statistics now I'm gonna get descriptive statistics for items for the scale that's the entire scale of four items altogether and also statistics for scale if item deleted and this is a very useful uh, d this generates a very useful table for us I'm going to continue and uh, before clicking OK I wanted to show you that SPSS gives you a large number of options like alpha that we're going to estimate but also a split half reliability analysis Gutman parallel and strict parallel but for this presentation I think alpha is the best and it's the most popular one. I think no one will ever question you why you use you chose alpha, at least presently. I clicked OK and I got um, usual um, descriptive statistics. 209 people were were in the sample, and the data from all of them, though that's 100% of them, was used. Cronbach's alpha, uh, based on uh, standardized items, is 0 0.877 that's based on the correlation where is whereas the uh, chromos alpha based on covariance is only slightly below this one is 0 0.876 which is actually negligible really these are the item statistics the mean scores that drops down from section 1 to section 4 and then the correlation that is exactly the same as the correlation that I showed you before and the covariance which as you can see is um, everything in this covariance matrix is larger than one and that's why we call it non-standardized correlation because it doesn't have uh, a range actually the range is between minus infinity to plus infinity whereas the, the correlation has a limited range between minus one to plus one and as a result it's much easier to make sense of now we are have this item total statistics and this is a very important and useful uh, table we have on this on the right hand side uh, you can find let me just draw some lines here for you you can find a Cronbach's alpha if, if item deleted so if you delete section 4 Cronbach's alpha will drop to uh, 0 0.852 which is not a good idea therefore because Cronbach's alpha was 0 0.8 almost nine almost almost or eight seven eight seven so you don't want to drop your uh, Chromebox alpha to a lower value by dropping one of your items early if you do the same thing you will get a different kinds of and lower kind of Chromebox alpha value now for squared multiple correlation uh, let me explain this one first before I explain this um, so let me just okay. So uh, for squared multiple correlation, 